Maxwell House Coffee presents Mama, starring Peggy Wood. I remember this album on our parlor table at home. I remember the old pictures from Norway that Mama and Papa brought with them when they came to this country. The uncles and the aunts and the cousins I had there. And I remember my family. I remember my sister Dagmar. And my brother Nell. And of course, Papa. But most of all, when I look through this album, most of all, I remember Mama. Yes, here's Mama. Brought to you by Maxwell House Coffee, the richer, mellower blend. Already a favorite in Mama's time, today more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand at any price. Today, as always, this sign of good coffee means Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Let me see if you are boiling over yet. Oh, it's nothing to joke about, Mama. I feel awful. Always when you have a spelling test, you feel awful. But this has nothing to do with the test, Mama. Yeah. I just don't feel well. Well, you have no fever. Oh, Mama, that can't reach far down enough to show how bad I feel. Oh, stomach ache. Awful. Eh, you will have to try castor oil. Oh, no. That is the best for stomach ache. Well, this is no regular kind of a stomach ache, Mama. Uh. It kind of moves all around. Oh. One minute it's a stomach ache, and then it's a headache. And then and it is a spelling test. Honest, Mama. I feel sick. I will call Dr. Johnson then. Oh, no, Mama. Oh, well, if you feel sick. But, but he's so expensive. Yeah. Besides, I don't think he's a very good doctor anymore. <laughs> you were just saying that because Dr. Johnson is on to you. Remember what he said last week? There is nothing wrong with this child that the burning down of the school would not cure. Remember? Remember? <laughs> Stop it, Mama. No, you were very sick. Oh, well, yeah. I am. <coughs> well, you will feel better when the test is over. Oh, do I have to go to school, Mama? Yeah. Well, don't blame me if something terrible happens to me. Oh, stop it, Dagma. What has got into you lately? <laughs> Every time you do not feel like doing something, you make a long face and you say you are sick. Well, I... You are not. Now run along to school. You'll be late. Fly! Oh, Dagmar, Tommy Jordan was looking all over for you. For me? His father bought him a whole box of all-day suckers and he wanted to give you one. Oh, boy, where'd he go? School, I guess. He was just out front. Hey, Tommy, wait for me! <laughs> She's very sick. Has she been starting that again? Mm -hmm. Spelling test. Did you forget something? Oh, I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to Grace's after school this afternoon, Mama. That is, if you don't mind. Well, what about your practicing? Well, I can do that tonight. You have your homework tonight? Oh, Mama, what difference does it make if I miss practice once in a while? Once in a while. Yesterday and the day before. And ten minutes the day before that. That is not what Papa pays for Mrs. Kleiner. I hate music lessons. Well, you were the one that wanted to take them. But Mrs. Kleiner makes everything so hard. <laughs> Everybody wants something for nothing in this house. Oh, Mama, please let me go to Grace this afternoon. You have to practice, that's it. Now I know why they say all musicians have a secret sorrow. They were made to practice when they were young. Oh, oh Papa's going to fix that, Mama. He was going to fix it two weeks ago, and it is still stuck. You know what we were going to do this afternoon at Grace's? Uh, Mama, wood burning. I wonder what to have for supper. Oh, anything, Mama. It doesn't matter. Grace got a wood burning set for Christmas. It's such fun. Why do I always have to make you do everything, Catherine? You have to practice. I know it, I know it. And... Do you not think it would be a good idea to go to school? Look at the time. Golly, Mom, I'm going to be late. Why no. didn't you tell me? Uh. Me, Ben? Oh. <laughs> you surprised me, Ben, me. <laughs> I met Mr. Lodge outside, and he gave me those. Yeah. I thought I'd pay a little yoke on you. <laughs> then if he closed the door. <laughs> now, who are they from? Oh, Bills. Oh, 
Well, I thought maybe, Martha, that we could go to market together. No, no, I have not made my bed yet. Oh, Martha. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what Mrs. Jansrud told me? No. Someday Mrs. Lindquist does not make her bed until three o'clock. Oh, I could not live like that. Oh, it would make me feel like a pig. Well, make yourself at home, Annie. I'll be with you in a yiffy. Well, where are you going? My bed. Oh, well, I will help you. Oh, no, I can make my own bed. Oh, no, no. Four hands is better than two. I will help you. <laughs> in that way. It will go quicker. <laughs> Well, since when have the best been in the kitchen? Oh, well, I will bet was right away. <laughs> I forgot I left the coffee on the stove. Oh, well, I'm glad I have got no boys. They are worse than pigs. All day long I am asking Elsa to pick up his room and look. Anyway, you don't leave it until three o'clock. Uh, some days I would like to. Oh, you, Martha. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get so sick of, of bed sheets and dirty clothes. I wish we were Eskimos and did not need to use such things. Here, put you it can up. Thank your lucky stars that you are not Mrs. Edlund. Why? <laughs> because now she has one more bed to make than she used to. What do you mean? Then, on that 30th anniversary, Mr. Edlin gave her those newfangled twin beds. You know, with the spaces. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Mrs. Johnson told me so. <laughs> Annie, what are you going to have for supper? Oh, Martha, I have not made up my mind. You too, huh? Well, I was thinking of having pig's knuckles and sauerkraut, but I'm not sure yet. Well, that would not be right for the children. Well, everything is so expensive. Yeah. Round steak is 14 cents a pound. Well, I would not pay that. But I have to think of something every day, every day. Mother, where does this sweater go? Or, uh, uh, oh. I wonder what Nelsie has in his pocket. <laughs> if I knew what boys carried around in their pockets, I would know more than Mr. Edison. Uh, oh, Martha. What? Martha. Look. Cigarette. Phil, aren't you going to say something? What can I say? Well, if I had the boy as young as nails, and he was going around smoking, I would have something to say. I would put him over my knee and I would spank him, I would. Nails is 16 years old. Well, then let Lars spank him. Mm. 16 is too young to smoke. I know. I wish he would not. Well, then why do you let him? Why do I have to make everybody do everything? Yeah, then, Martha, you cannot let him go around smoking. You will stunt his growth. And maybe give him the long trouble. Well, all right, Martha. Now, come along. Let's go to the store. Oh, why do we always have to eat every day? I tell you something, Henny. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I was an old man. Oh, Martha. Yeah, <laughs> I do. What does a family mean? Work. And who appreciates it? Nobody. Oh. This is just my bad day. Oh, oh, come on. So my man said to me, where did you ever hear a story like that? And what did you say? I say, from Jenny Oberg, I say. And what did he say? Jenny Oberg. Huh. Why do you pay any attention to it then? You know what a gossip and loud mouth Jenny Oberg is. About Jenny Arborg, he said. <laughs> gossip and loud mouth, he said. I love it. I've never seen it too pale. Talk of somebody in the heavy heart. Is it the Oba? I'm not a sister, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oba. Oh, we were oh, just thinking of you. Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson. Well, I was going to call you both later this morning. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, no, my man goes to Lodge this evening. I was going to have a few of the girls in. Oh, that would be nice. We would play Romney. Can you all come? Oh, yeah, that would be fine. I would love to, Mrs. Lindquist. Yeah. Well, how about you, Mrs. Hanson? Well, I am not much of a hand for cars. Oh, what is the difference? We play for fun only. Well, it is nice of you to ask me, but I have too much to do at home. Oh, now, Martha, what have you got to do? Well, I have the sewing, and uh, I have to get nails at his geometry, and then there is the... Um, drawer in the kitchen that must be fixed. Oh, well, at last fix that. Are you crazy? Well, 
He will not start it unless I am there to push him on. Oh, he's just like my man. Mm -hmm. Mine too. Mm -hmm. These tomatoes are not very fresh. Well, if you had been squeezed and pinched and dropped as much as that tomato is, you wouldn't be very fresh either. Oh. How much are they? Fifteen cents a quart. Oh, that is highly robbery. Oh, I wish you would come, Mrs. Hanson. Oh, Martha, let your family look out for themselves for this run. They don't appreciate what we do for them anyway, do they, girls? They certainly do not. <laughs> then only this morning, Martha, you said you wished you were an old maid. Oh, oh, oh get me, get me. Oh, we wish you would come, Mrs. Hanson. Well, I would like to, but the sewing just must be done. Oh, she is hopeless. All she wants to be is used to hire girls for her family. <laughs> well, if you change your mind, we would want you, you remember. I will, thank you. Oh, everything is so dear. I wish I knew what to get for supper. We are having that trouble too. <laughs> There's a heck with it. I'm going to have the sauerkraut. Mm. I think maybe stew. My man likes that. Yeah, we had stew two nights ago. But did you see the chops today? We had chops last night. You like fish? I do not know what I want. Oh, my sister-in-law in Minnesota sent me the most wonderful recipe for meatloaf. Meatloaf would be nice. Oh, but this is wonderful. Yes. My man had four helpings. Yeah. And it takes five hours to make. But why is it so hard? Because everything must be just so. But oh. that is what makes it so good. Then maybe you would be so kind as to give me this recipe, Mrs. Lindquist. You are going yeah. to spend five hours making supper for your family? Uh. Now I know she's crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh you <laughs> I'll always remember how <clears throat> hard I practiced that afternoon. So this is the way you practice? Oh, um, well, this magazine just happened to be on the piano, Mama. So? Oh, well, I, I can do these even when I do read, Mama, listen. Never put the magazine away, Catherine. You know what Mrs. Kleiner said last time? You are not working hard enough. Oh, she wants me to practice all the time. You have been practicing exactly five minutes. Oh, it must be more than that, Mama. I'll go look. Now, you sit down. <laughs> and you practice. Yeah, Catherine. Tag my butt, A hundred and a gold star! Oh, a hundred and a gold star! Oh, thank God, that is wonderful. Robert, Richard, was the only other one who was perfect. Yeah, I bet you feel better now, huh? Oh, yes, Mom. <laughs> and now I'm going over to Sarah Ann. We're going to play store. Oh, which reminds me, I need a bunch of parsley. Oh, I'm sorry, but we're going to play dry goods store. Oh, but before you open your store, will you run down to Mr. Bull's? And get him to give you a nice bunch of parsley. But Sarah Ann's expecting me right away, Mama. We need the parsley for supper. Well, could Captain get it? Captain is practicing. What about Nels? Nels is not home yet. Couldn't they deliver it? A bunch of parsley. How do you expect me to ask him to deliver a penny bunch of parsley? Oh, do not be such a lazy bones. Go down to the store and do not lose the penny. Gosh. Now what is the matter? Mama, I've kind of got my stomach ache again. If you do not go to the store this very minute, Dagmar Hansen, I will give you an ache someplace else. Ah! Oh, that did not hurt you. I'll get a drink of water and go back again, but don't worry, Mama. I'm adding it on the other end. Oh, hello, Martha. Oh, hello, Yenny. Oh, my feet are killing me today. Oh, have you been shopping? Hell no, I was just looking. I didn't buy anything. <laughs> Mrs. Lindquist's sister? You've been working since one o'clock. Well, foolish. No, it's a good recipe, I can tell. Well, it should be all that work. Lars likes it. Well, after five hours, he'd better like it. Mm -hmm. oh. Are you 
you coming with us to play cards tonight? No, I told you I would not. Well, I thought you might change your mind. Coffee, Yenny? No, I can only stay a minute. Well, you've got time for a cup of coffee. Hello, Mama. Hello, Ed. Hello, Aunt Jenny. Well, here he is. Yeah, it's me. And a very good thing. What's the matter? And your mama will tell you. Uh, uh, yeah, but not now, Ness. Something bad? You will find out. <laughs> well, my conscience is clear. I'll be in my room, Mama, in case you want me. <coughs> <coughs> but did I tell you? The lung trouble. Oh, he just has a frog in his throat. Oh, Mother, you are always making excuses for your family. And I think today they need them. Oh, no, Papa. Yiggity, yig. Well, that's what I said. Yiggity, yig. Oh, put me down a minute, Papa. I want to show you something. Yeah, it will be a pleasure to put you down, Dagmar. You're getting heavier every minute. Well, when did you see what I found, Papa? What is that? A loose board. Oh, I must fix that. Oh, no, Papa. But if the board is loose, somebody might trip over it and hurt themselves, Dagmar. But you were a good girl to find it. Oh, was I, Papa? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you love me. Yeah. Oh, Mama! Oh. <laughs> now oh. we go in to supper, huh? Hello, Lars. Hello, Martha. Hey, Dagma. How was the dry goods store at Sarah Ann's? Oh, it was all right. What is the matter with her? Well, I, I was cross with her today. And I had to give her a slap on the backside. About so hard. Oh, only so. Yeah, then she was not hurt, only mm. her feelings. Well, was it a nice day, Martha? But besides Dagmar, yeah. Catherine did not want to practice. Oh. And Nels has been smoking again. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Yanni and I found cigarettes in his fetter. I bet it was Yanni who found them. <laughs> well, it is nothing to joke about that. He is too young to smoke. Well, what did he say? I did not talk to him. Mm. I am waiting for you to do that. Oh. Well, why should I be the one who always has to do the scolding? Now, I did not say that, Martha. Well, you looked it. Well, do not worry, Martha. I will talk to him after supper, mm. whenever that is. Oh, it is ready. Call yeah. the children. Yeah. Children, supper is ready. Yeah. Tell Dagmar to wash her hands. And wash the hands, Dagmar. I'm sorry, Dagmar, Papa. Yeah. Oh, I am hungry, Martha. Mm. Ah, you laugh. Yeah, I could eat a horse. But we have something better than that. Mm -hmm. But no wonder you are hungry. You have not eaten your dinner pail. There is a reason for that. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Papa. Hello, Captain. But Captain, Captain, sit down quickly. Papa is hungry and he has not eaten his dinner pail today. And wait till I tell you the reason why. Why, Papa? Well, oh, Papa. Oh, hello, Nels. And, uh, it's a cold egg, Ma. Food is ready. Oh, Dad, yeah. You don't have to shout so. I was not shouting. Oh, you were so. You do it all the time. Now, be quiet. You are both at the table. Yeah, well, where's the food, Mama? It <laughs> is right Hungry. here. Yeah, and am I ready for it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Papa did not eat his dinner fail today. And you know why? <laughs> My boss, Mr. Yankins, asked me to have dinner with him in a restaurant. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Papa, was the food good? Oh, it was wonderful. What'd you have, Papa? Well, first the waiter brought in the dish of uh, branches of celery and olives. Oh, oh I wish we could have olives. Yeah, and then we had oxtail soup and, um, and a Parker House rolls. Oh, Parker, Parker, Parker House rolls. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So all through supper, Papa told us about the wonderful meal he had had that noon with Mr. Jenkins. We never went to restaurants hardly, so it was exciting to hear about one. So exciting that none of us thought to say one word about Mama's meatloaf. And then when we were all through eating, the waiter brought finger bowls. Oh, why can't we have finger bowls, Mama? Because that would mean five extra dishes to wash. But if we ate in restaurants, we wouldn't have to wash any dishes. I wish we could eat in a restaurant at least once in a while, Papa. Oh, Harold right. Bradley and his folks eat in a restaurant every Thursday night, Papa. Oh, yeah. Martha, where are you going? Out. So, where was Mrs. Eplin? Walking down the street toward me. I 
remembered what Mrs. Johnson had said, and I could not help giggling. Well, did you say anything to her about it? Of course she did not. Well, it is somewhat display. Well, not mine. Not mine. Well, it must be you, Martha. Well, Martha, for heaven's sake, keep your mind on the game. Why did you come to play cards if you're going to sit there thinking about something else? And I told you I was not much of a card player. I will put down three sixes and discard the seven. <laughs> three sixes she puts down. So, have you heard Mrs. Kendall's voice sing? The little one? Yeah, with the freckles. Oh, what is the matter with him? Oh, something bad. The doctors are not sure. Oh, well, if they ask me, the doctors are never sure. Oh, well, it's very strange about this. All week long, the little boy has been complaining he felt sick. His head ached and his stomach ached, he said. And Mrs. Kendall, she thought he was just trying to get out of school. You know where the kids are. And now he is very, very sick. Well, that just goes to show you. Yeah, they are very worried about him. Who's play? Well, it must be you again, Martha. Oh, I cannot play any longer. I... And why not? It is early yet. I just remembered something, and I have to go home. Excuse me, please. Oh, but we have not had our coffee yet. Well, I take you just the same, Mrs. Lindquist. But you will... Excuse me. I have to go home. Oh! Oh! <laughs> See your tongue. I feel fine, Mama. Let me see your tongue. Uh, but where is Papa? I don't know. Then why is he not around at a time like this? Papa's in the cellar fixing the broken drawer. Oh. Papa was in the cellar. Oh. Say, what is the matter? Nothing. Silly Mama thinks I'm sick. Well, is she? I guess not. I guess it was my imagination. Oh. Mm. Well, I did not expect you home so soon from the Lindquist. How did you know I was at the Lindquist? Oh, Mrs. Jans was phone, and I said you were out someplace, and she said you were at the Lindquist. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Jans <laughs> well, I'm glad you came home early, Mama. Yeah. Now you can tuck me in. Yeah, as soon as I have taken off my coat. <laughs> oh, I don't you think I was a good girl to get myself ready for bed? Yeah, you were a good girl. And Catherine was a good girl to practice. Yeah, you were both good girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, what about me? To fix the drawer? It works fine now, Martha. Oh, I guess I was the bad one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I had to go out without doing my dishes. Well, the girls did them. I felt so wicked leaving them. And I was sure I was going to be punished. And I was sure Dagmar was sick. Oh, but how could anybody else be sick much the way you feed us, Martha? <laughs> Oh, that meatloaf tonight. Wonderful. Mm. Not like that you could get in a restaurant. Now, where can you get food like that in a restaurant? Oh, I am glad I do not live alone like Mr. Jenkins. Yeah, you know what I said to, to Jenny today, last? What? I said I wish there was an old maid. Oh, a fine old maid you would make, Martha. <laughs> no, but I did not mean it. I would not have things any different than what they are. Ever. Excuse. Now I go tuck Dagmar in. Ah, do not worry, Martha. She is not sick. <laughs> I know. Now, did you speak to Nels about, uh, you know what? Well, about the fixing the drawer and everything. I did not have time. Oh, Lord. For oh, heaven's sakes, Martha, do I have to do everything around here? Papa didn't have to do everything in our house. <laughs> I remember by the next morning, Mama's bad day was forgotten. 
That was when we had a visit from one of our favorite people on Steiner Street, Mr. Staley, the parcel postman, who brought the mail to our house when Mr. Larch's feet gave out. On cold days, I remember, when Mama heard his ring, she'd invite him in to rest for a few minutes and warm his hands and have a good hot cup of coffee. Dagmar liked to have him stop in, too, because he usually brought her stamps from foreign lands for her stamp album. How Mr. Staley enjoyed those few moments of Mama's hospitality. And when that hospitality includes a cheering cup of Maxwell House, coffee time becomes one of the happiest moments of the day. Of course, enjoying Maxwell House is an old family custom in this country, and the reason's mighty plain to see in the faces of coffee lovers everywhere. It's flavor, wonderful heartwarming flavor that comes from our own recipe, the one and only recipe for good to the last drop flavor. You see, down in the coffee countries to the south, coffee grows in scores of different varieties, no two alike in flavor. And there are more ways to put those coffees together in a blend than there are stamps in Dagmar's album. But the whole world over, there's only one way, one recipe for that famous Maxwell House flavor. Yes, it's the world famous recipe that makes Maxwell House such a family favorite that year after year keeps folks passing their cups and saying, Best taste in coffee I've had in a month of Sundays. <laughs> Another way of putting it, of course, is the sign of good coffee. Everywhere you see it, you know it means fragrance. Good to the last drop, Maxwell House. Make a point to buy it in the blue tin tomorrow, won't you? Always good to the last drop. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.